All right, fellow humans, homo sapiens that is, um, this is just going to be a little preface to the video I just shot. I'm going to put it up on my YouTube channel. Um, the things I didn't say in that video, so uh, taken out of context, it might be a little wonky, but here it goes. My kids don't eat vegetables at all, um, and they're thriving, so we cool. They don't like vegetables. I tried to force it, and they didn't like it. Uh, now I know they don't need them, so they don't eat them. Everybody wins. What they do eat, um, if I give them chips, I go with grain-free as often as I can, and those grain-free chips by Siete are cooked in like olive oil or avocado oil, something like that that is not as high in linoleic acid, which will be discussed in the podcast. Uh, in addition to that, we do um, we do give them uh, the bolder uh, potato chips on occasion as well, uh, because those are also cooked in avocado or olive oil. Um, I think we prefer the olive oil, um, but I'm not sure which one they actually prefer from taste. Um, and and that's it. So uh, the kids get bread that is made without vegetable oil. It's uh, butter bread, which will be discussed. They do get chips, uh, both uh, grain-free and, and potato uh, versions. And they love pork rinds um, as well, which uh, are generally good to go because they're animal-based. And let's see, what else do they eat? Uh, they get regular old stuff. They get ice cream, but I get full-fat ice cream made with um, if it's got any anything in there that's not from an animal, it's going to be um, coconut oil. Um, and uh, uh, and then you know we just minimize the we just minimize the garbage. They go to regular old ice cream shops and get regular ice cream, but when we buy stuff at home, the majority of what they're eating is going to be very low in oils and very low in grains and very low in inflammation. So. It's, it's a game of inches. We've got a whole lifetime ahead of these kids, and they're going to have to be able to enjoy certain things. But we can make sure that we minimize the damage done by correcting for harmful ingredients like vegetable oil and grains and processed sugar. Again, meat, fruit, eggs, and dairy is the perfect life, but... Sometimes you just want something crunchy, I guess. Hi, right, gang. Good morning. I've got just a few minutes before I've got to go pick up my son. Before I get to go pick up my son, I should say. I'm so enjoying these lunches together. It's his last, last year before he goes to kindergarten and has all-day school. Um, so, that's another topic altogether. Some of the questions that I wanted to answer in more detail... Um, were regarding kids and I'm going to get my son reminded me of that so I'm gonna make this into a, a, a few things a few little segments here the first is keto well, my uh, my handle was keto CrossFit dad for maybe a year or more um, I did a ketogenic diet for 18 months and I got that question more often like do you put your kids on a keto diet the answer is no um, but I'll tell you more about that uh, I do have them on an animal-based diet, but I'll tell you more about that. So keto, why keto? Uh, ketogenic diet mimics fasting. It allows you to heal your body's metabolic dysfunction, which is diabetes, insulin resistance. A slew of other things will get better along the way because high insulin and chronically high blood sugar all lead to bad, bad things. Inflammation in the joints, uh, deterioration of vision, poor dental health, gum disease, uh, weight gain, uh, just a host of things go wrong when you're metabolically unwell. I had heard, read, seen that intermittent fasting was very crucial and it seemed evolutionarily appropriate, as I mentioned before. So I tried it, but I was too hungry. I was diabetic. I could not maintain anything like a normal life without constantly putting something, some form of caloric intake in my face, a carbohydrate, basically. Um, so I did a ketogenic diet to repair that. 
A ketogenic diet is a magical piece of human history and human evolution. If you've never gone into a state of prolonged ketosis, then you truly are missing out. Your body makes physical changes that are permanent and they make you better, all of them. Your cells produce more mitochondria, your body ramps up enzyme production to help you uh, digest fats. You become more energy efficient, you become better at sparing glucose. A lot of people don't know that very few parts of your body actually need glucose to function. Uh, most all of them can run directly off of fat like muscles or ketones like muscles, heart, and a lot of them prefer ketones. But your testes, if you're a guy, um, red blood cells, parts of the brain, they all require glucose. Do you have to eat glucose? No. Never. You don't have to. Gluconeogenesis is a process by which your body makes all the glucose it needs. It only does this when it's in dire straits, but once you've gotten used to it, it's quite easy to manage and you will notice if you're on a zero carbohydrate diet or an ultra low carbohydrate diet you have stable energy throughout the day that being said long-term ketosis is not good for you it does start to lead to other issues uh, cramping electrolyte imbalance when I was on a keto diet I had to pee constantly and I had to eat salt and take keto chow drops and this is all right in line with biology your Kidneys require signaling from insulin in order to tell it to hang on to electrolytes. So I switched into a zero carb carnivore diet right after the keto diet because I started intermittent fasting and I was very much, I was just enjoying the hell out of it. But I've, I realized at the end of a 16, 18, 20 hour fast, I didn't want broccoli. The only thing I wanted was meat. And I already had studied the carnivore diet, so I moved on to carnivore and no looking back okay so why keto is beneficial is because it repairs metabolic dysfunction uh, and keto is the abstention of carbs do carbs cause metabolic dysfunction no no they don't no I hear you no they don't trust me they don't you evolved eating honey you evolved drinking milk you evolved you evolved eating carbohydrates. They weren't your primary fuel source. The human body holds about 2,000 calories worth of glycogen at a time and about 30,000 calories worth of fat at a time. That's a skinny person. So yes, fat is your body's preferred fuel, period. Full stop, stop arguing. It's simple biology. But you don't have to go into ketosis in order to repair the damage if the damage isn't done if that makes sense. What causes the damage? Seed oils. Seed oils, especially linoleic acid, uh, polyunsaturated fatty acid, have been linked to um, all sorts of metabolic dysfunction. They appear to be a signaling molecule for your fat cells telling them to keep storing. It doesn't close the gate. A lot of times when you are in a surplus state, your fat cells will divide. This prevents fat cells from dividing and it just keeps filling them up and it spills out all sorts of garbage causing inflammation, cytokines, and you get ill. Uh, so moving on. Kids in keto. Is it safe for kids to be in ketosis? Babies are born in ketosis. That's, that's the only way that we can feed that starving little brain. Ketones elicit such a powerful impact on energy, ATP production, they are far more powerful than glucose. Unit for unit, it is dramatically different how much energy you can get from a ketone than you can from a molecule of glucose. And because the human brain is such a energy hungry organ, and because babies brains in particular are growing and learning so much so fast, babies are born in ketosis. So yes, it's safe for them to be in ketosis. Do you need to feed a baby a ketogenic diet? No. Mother's milk has everything they need. If you're giving your kid breast milk, they're gonna have the perfect everything that they need. Formula is most often made with vegetable oil, if not always. You wanna avoid it, but sometimes, I mean, my kids all got formula. It's, life happens. Sometimes you can't, you can't always breastfeed for one reason or another, and nobody's faulting you. This is just data. Do with it as you please. So, do, 
do my kids need to be on a ketogenic diet? No. They don't need to eat vegetable oils because that's what's going to cause metabolic dysfunction. Okay. Do my kids need to eat sugar as soon as they wake up? No. And neither do you. You just woke up. Your body spent six to eight hours leveling everything out and getting you perfect. It's like having a grand opening and all the clients walk in and you've got no stock. That's not how it works. Your body is prepared when your eyes open. Given that you've rested and eaten properly the day before, your body is prepared for the day. Stop, okay? Just go about your business. Do some shit. But your babies, they're growing. So do I recommend that, that kids fast? No. I don't have to recommend. Have you ever tried to feed a kid first thing in the morning? They don't want it because they are not hungry and they know it. And we force them to eat because they have a schedule to keep. And it's sad that we have to lock our kids inside a dark grayish room with all this blue light surrounded by recycled air and not let them outside. And we also have to force them to eat because they're going to be locked in all day. Okay, well, you can't change that. You want your kids to get an education. But what you can do, or at least what I do, is I give them access to fruit in the morning if they want it, but they are going to eat meat and eggs. That's breakfast. Bacon and eggs, hamburger meat and eggs, I don't care. Eggs alone is fine, but I make sure to give my kids protein and fat, the things that they truly need to satiate their hunger, support brain function, and support muscle growth. And that's it. I don't restrict carbohydrates. I don't tell them that they can't have ice creams or snacks or anything like that. I monitor it. I make sure that it's not the first thing that goes in their mouth and it's not the only thing that goes in their mouth. But kids are growing. They need energy in far greater demand than somebody who's just maintaining their weight because they are building something. And you can't build a body out of carbs. You can't build a body out of fat, really. You need to build a body out of protein and minerals. And those things come from organs. So I do take desiccated organs, and they come from egg yolks. Uh, I do take desiccated organs and sprinkle it into my kids. I'll make them a smoothie with fruit and, and uh, protein and, and beef organs and give that to them. And I make sure that they eat their egg yolks. When I was a child, I never ate egg yolks. My mom would try to force me, but I never would. Uh, and I didn't have good health. I was anemic. I had to go have my blood taken all the time. I spent so much time in a dentist chair having teeth drilled and capped. As a, by the time I was 10, I had experienced more physical pain at the dentist than most people will ever experience in their life. And it's because I didn't get butter, I got margarine. I didn't get egg yolks, I got egg whites. And I didn't get sunlight either. And those are all vital to human health. So that's another thing. I make sure that my kids get sunlight. I try to get them outside as often as possible. I'll even bring them outside with a tablet or something, let them look at their, at their entertainment while they're outside, if that's what it takes to get some sunlight on them, because I know that that's far more crucial than anything else that I can do. Yeah. Eggs, meat, fruit, sunlight, and my kids seem to be doing pretty good. My, my kids all seem healthy. They're, they're all happy. They all have never had a cavity. And I feel confident that this is the way. So I'm going to keep going. Um, and that's about it. Yeah, that's, that's really all I wanted to cover. It's like, do I do draconian measures to keep my kids from having fun? No. I even go so far as my son... Um, he eats all beef hot dogs. That's, that's his, I mean, I've offered him plenty of other things, but the, really the only two things he asks for consistently are fried eggs, fried and beef tallow, and hot dogs. And he eats both of those things every day, almost every day. Um, and so do I give him a hot dog bun? Yes. I don't like the fact that he eats bread. What can I do to minimize it? I buy butter bread. And I look at the ingredients. A lot of hot dog buns are made with soy protein or soy flour. I avoid those. Almost every bread that you can find is made with some sort of vegetable oil. Soybean oil, canola, safflower. Those are all terrible. And those are all going to hurt your kids. So, uh, nature's own butter bread and nature's own butter bread hot dog and burger buns. That's what I buy. 
Um, Because again, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to make these kids outcasts. I'm trying to make these kids powerful, intelligent, healthy, resilient, and it's working. It's working. So, I would love to hear some questions from you guys and actually just have a have a little bit of a dialogue so if there's anything you do want to know about the way that I'm doing things I can get granular I uh, I'm happy to help and I hope this does carnivore CrossFit dad out <laughs>